Sangita Ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Let's start. Okay. Great. So, good afternoon to one and all present here. And uh, I'm, I'm extremely happy that we're having this session today. As of uh, yesterday, there were a lot of technical issues. So, I would like to first and foremost uh, thank um, uh, Principal Ma'am Jayanti Ma'am. Uh, you've been an uh, amazing dynamic leader. I, I was so, so uh, impressed and, you know, I was admiring your leadership cap uh, capabilities yesterday uh, to get this going. And because of her, this session is happening right now successfully. So a big, big thank you for you, ma'am, for coordinating from day one. And uh, I would like to um, thank your entire team for making this happen also. So uh, good afternoon, uh, children. Thank you. I am uh, sure uh, I will get to meet you all in person. And that will be the best way to, uh, for me to also learn with you all. And uh, this is the best opportunity that I can uh, get by uh, you know, connecting with you all through online in this COVID situation. So I welcome you all today to uh, the session on climate uh, uh, story. So let me share my screen. Okay, here I am. I am uh, again, once again, I am glad that I will be sharing uh, my story and uh, talking about the climate crisis that's happening around the world right now. So why are we here today? I'm sure you guys have uh, learned about global warming, about climate change, about greenhouse gases, all these things you will uh, be learning in your school, uh, in your curriculum, about pollution, about chemicals, so many things. But there is a lot more to it. There are so many things that are happening around the world today that we have to start thinking seriously about it and make a lot of changes in our lifestyle. So that is why we are here. And I'm going to take you through uh, uh, this entire picture of what is happening around the world as a whole. So only when you understand the global effect that is having that is happening around us, you will be able to know what is the impact that is uh, that we are causing to our only home, the planet Earth. So I welcome uh, you all to today's session on the climate story, what we need to know to choose a better future. So uh, let me give you an introduction about myself. I'm Sangeeta Shivdasni. I am a climate reality leader, a social worker, and environment enthusiast. And uh, I love, uh, my hobby is uh, to learn new things. So I love learning. I, uh, I, I'm sure a lot of eyebrows must be popping up right now. And uh, I love to learn about new things and uh, getting to know what it is and how it is, it works and all those things. So I'm very, very interested in learning. And that is how I ended up uh, with climate reality. So a, a small introduction about him. I was trained by ex-US Vice President and Nobel Laureate, Mr. Al Gore here. He was uh, responsible for creating a huge impact on the awareness level about climate change. And he won the Nobel Peace Prize also for this. And uh, I was personally trained by him uh, recently. Then uh, there was a panel of experts. There were scientists, there were doctors, there were a lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, even people from the United Nations were there in the training. And a lot of things I got to learn about. And this is uh, an opportunity for me to share some of those things with you and, uh, you, know, uh, you know, share the knowledge that I had gained in the training with all of you today. So just a moment. Okay. So let's go on to the uh, first picture ever taken uh, about the Earth. This is a famous picture of uh, the Earth that was taken by Apollo 17 mission in uh, 1972. And uh, when they were traveling towards the moon, this photo was clicked about the Earth. Now, this is famously called as the blue marble photograph of the Earth. And you know what? We always thought Earth is such a big planet and we can do whatever we want. You know, you can, uh, you know, so such a big vast space we have around us. But after this picture, people started thinking. Humanity changed the way it uh, thought about Earth and how small our planet is compared in the, in the space and what one person doing in the planet can uh, affect 
the rest of the planet. So that we, uh, thought process changed after this picture came into our hands. So this is a very, very important landmark in knowing or learning about our Earth. There's another picture here. This is taken from the International Space Station. Uh, this is a, a picture of the sun rising uh, above the lowermost layers of the atmosphere. Now, we stand on the ground and we look up and we think the sky is just limitless and you know it keeps going and going and uh, you can just keep traveling up above. But uh, in reality, uh, what happens is that this thin layer that you see here is the only atmosphere that we have remaining is just space. So what we are doing right now is we are throwing so much of pollution in between these layers and making the earth warmer and warmer. So three questions that we can ask ourselves, must we change, can we change, uh, will we change? So addressing the first question, must we change? Now, scientists have been telling us for a long time, even uh, in 1800s, you can see that there have been suggestions that we have to safeguard our planet. Now, Mother Nature has started telling us, yes, we need to change. We must change for saving our planet Earth. So what are we doing to Earth today? We are throwing 152 million tons of man-made global warming pollution into this thin shell, okay, into this thin shell of atmosphere every 24 hours. Every day we are throwing, uh, you know, it's like throwing uh, garbage in the dustbin. It's like that we are throwing pollution into the atmosphere every day. So many million tons we are throwing into the atmosphere. So let's let's uh, learn the basic of uh, greenhouse emissions and you know the uh, global warming the sunlight falls on the earth i'm sure you've learned this in your class the sunlight falls on the earth it gets heated up and most of the uh, heat gets re-radiated back it goes back into space and some of it gets trapped into this atmosphere now this heat is very very important for us because the earth the living beings on Earth need this heat. It, it's called the Goldilocks principle. I'm sure you're all aware of about the story of Goldilocks. You know, Goldilocks gets lost in the forest. She uh, finds a house with three bears, and then she goes inside. She's hungry. She finds three bowls of porridge on the table, and there is a, a papa bear's porridge, which is very hot. She's not able to have it. Then she tries the baby bear's porridge, which is very cold, so she doesn't like it. Then she tries mama bear's porridge bowl, and it is warm and right temperature, so she enjoys the porridge. So just like that, this particular temperature, the heat that gets trapped within this layer is very, very important for the earth to survive. But what we are doing right now is we are thickening this atmospheric layer by sending all this pollution so more and more heat is getting trapped in between okay and making the earth much warmer okay so what is causing all this green greenhouse gas uh, pollution that is happening here you can see there are so many reasons why this is happening you can uh, you know see it in the uh, right in your screen what is happening to our world what we are doing but the actual source and the cause of this is using and burning of fossil fuels and uh, fossil fuels, what are fossil fuels? See, it, uh, when we use fossil fuels, the amount of pollution that's going up is as much as like uh, bursting 500,000 atomic bombs into the atmosphere. So, so much of pollution is created by the use of fossil fuels. Now, let's take a look at what are fossil fuels. There are three main fossil fuels, coal, then we have natural gas or methane, which we use in our kitchens. Then we have crude oil from where we get your diesel, uh, petrol, and so many more substances. And you can see that India and many other countries still are highly dependent on these fossil fuels. Now, what is how is it formed, fossil fuels? Plants and dead plants and dead animals, they fall onto the land or the ocean bed. And when they fall, over millions of years, the pressure and the temperature that works on them they convert them into coal or oil and natural gas. So what we are doing right now, we are digging deep inside our ocean or the land and removing these fossil fuels from our earth. So, so what we, if we are using fossil fuels, what can it do? How can it affect us? Here are some things that I would like to point out. So picture one, two, three shows you that land, air, water, 
they get polluted a lot especially in the areas where the extraction happens you can't you can't see uh, living uh, beings there you can't find plants or animals surviving in those areas so it affects a lot in those areas and it also results in the uh, 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 affecting the remaining world also uh, number picture of number 4 shows oil spills oil spills again we have read it in the news the damage that it causes for the marine life as well as humans and the uh, duration it takes for the oil spills to wear out is very very long and uh, so that is again a, a common uh, effect because of global warming now picture 5 here shows you uh, the result of ocean acidification which means the ocean is becoming acid too much of acidic in nature now what happens when the there's too much of acidity in the water there are many organisms in the uh, in the water that cannot survive or you know cannot adapt to it so like you take the steropod this steropod shows that the shell is becoming thinner because of too much of acidity in the water so imagine how much it is affecting uh, tiny organisms that live in uh, oceans picture number 6 shows you corals now uh, corals i'm sure you guys would have seen uh, in museums you could have seen in pictures you would have gone diving you would have found the uh, corals and they're beautiful right they're very colorful um, and lot of marine life depend on corals and they uh, they they are very colorful so when they are colorful they generally very very uh, they are alive you know and they support a lot of other uh, animals like fishes and other sea or uh, marine life okay so what is happening is because the water ocean is getting heated up very much the water is getting warmer the uh, corals in the sea are turning white they're getting bleached white so when they turn white the corals are dead so this is happening again due to global warming caused by uh, the uh, burning of fossil fuels then we have acid rain in picture 7 and of course smog uh, in our own capital we can't even see the uh, landmark there and uh, this is again in the news so so many th these are only few things common things that i can share with you but many more things that are happening to the uh, earth because of the use of fossil fuels so basically what we are doing is humans are changing the chemistry of the entire planet now uh, what happens when you burn all these fossil fuels there's so much of carbon that is released different types of carbon carbon dioxide carbon monoxide sulfur dioxide benzene so many uh, substances are released into the atmosphere and all these are very very harmful for us not only for human beings but pl for plants animals there are cancers also so so you know so many of so much of health uh, uh, defects are uh, got because of this chemicals being released into the atmosphere now overall if you see the earth the earth is getting warmer by the day so you can see in the recent years that there are not many uh, days with uh, you know chillness even uh, at night we find that it's too warm we use our air, co air conditioners and it's no more pleasant like it was before so the earth is getting much warmer in the recent years as you can see here now if you take the record number of uh, years from 19 out of the 20 hottest years are uh, taken if you can take the record it last 20 years it's been uh, very very hot and 2016 being the hottest year of all in uh, when compared so when you take heat as such heat is a biggest problem all over the world and especially in our country heat affects a lot of living beings as well as crops as well as weather everything gets affected due to this extra heat now global heat i told you global ocean heat how the water gets warm and what happens to the corals i told you already now what happens how the ocean gets warm now the heat that is trapped it be in between the atmosphere is absorbed by the ocean waters why because we are covered with 71% water right we are covered mostly with ocean water so the heat from the atmosphere actually goes back into the ocean and makes it warmer so you can see that in recent years the ocean has become warmer and warmer because there's too much of heat in the atmosphere and it goes into the ocean so what happens when the ocean gets heated up lot of uh, cyclones storms typhoons 
hurricanes, such events are becoming more and more common. Very often we see them happening, occurring, and at the same time, the intensity of these such events are becoming more and more, uh, you know, more higher, you know, more intense uh, storms or, you know, more stronger hurricanes and typhoons are found all around the world. Now, uh, for example, Cyclone Fanny, which uh, occurred last year along the coast of Odisha and West Bengal, you can see that the duration of generally what happens when a cyclone moves, it becomes weaker and weaker and then it dies down. Now you can see in these pictures how the cyclone moves, but still the intensity of the cyclones remains a, a lot stronger than even when compared to the days, uh, 28th April, 1st May, 3rd May, still you can find uh, it is staying stronger. So such events are occurring uh, more common because of the ocean getting uh, too much of uh, heat is absorbed by the ocean waters and the ocean is getting warmer. Now, I'm sure all of you would have learned about water cycle or the hydrological cycle. So um, uh, I would like to ask you all, or you know, you can probably put it in the chat box of uh, how the water cycle works, right? So you can put it and I will check on that. Uh, so generally what happens, I will uh, go through that. The water in our land gets evaporated because of the sunlight, the heat, and it becomes water vapor. The water vapor condenses, it becomes rain, and then comes back to earth. Now, what is happening to uh, all the heat? What is ha happening? Too much of water is getting evaporated because there is too much of water vapor, too much of, um, you know, um, rain, you know, too much of rain happens or precipitation events happen. And when this comes down, when too much of rain comes down, the land is not able to hold all that water and it results in floods, mudslides and many such events. So we see, of course, you know, 2015, we saw floods in Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh. We saw Kerala floods in August 2018. So such events are again becoming common and we see that it is it is coming in a big way. So uh, floods are again a reason with, uh, or an effect of global warming that's happening around the world. Now, atmospheric river is a wonderful concept. Um, this is uh, a river that is in the atmosphere. It doesn't have water like in the land we see river with water but in the atmosphere we see it as a water vapor now you can't see it with your eyes you know you can uh, satellites they send radio waves and then they read uh, these atmospheric river patterns now you can see that they are existent uh, throughout the world in various places and they are high sources of water in many many places so what happens the water vapor when they're uh, you know, they're flowing, they hit the coastal places and they heavy rain. When they go to high altitudes, they snow. So this is a normal pattern. So just like our northeast monsoon, southwest monsoon, how rains and uh, wind take direction, just like that, these atmospheric rivers also, they flow in a particular direction, flow in a particular pattern. Now, what is happening because of the heat? Because there's too much of heat from the ocean, the pattern gets disturbed. When the pattern gets disturbed, there are more and more, it splits into more and more different events and heavy rainfall or downpours happen in many places. Sometimes even for many days, it stays in one place and start, uh, continues to rain. So one such event you can see here, it is a supercell storm, uh, which happened in Montana in 2010. And uh, you can see the column of rain in the middle and uh, you know the complete rain clouds around just picture this uh, this happening in your city surrounded by your house your school uh, you know wherever your park everything is in this place and this is happening right in the middle of your area imagine what kind of flood and devastation that it will be crossing so such events again we are seeing it more and more now floods are again a reason because of global warming but Droughts are also another reason because of global warming. Now you might be thinking, now you told me that global warming is bringing more water and more floods, but at the same time, how can droughts happen? Now floods are caused because there's too much of heat is drying up, pulling all the water and evaporating it. The same heat, when it falls on the land, what happens? It removes the remaining, whatever moisture is there also gets removed. So whenever there is a place with less water table, it gets drier faster and it results in longer and deeper droughts. So droughts are again a bigger 
uh, uh, you know, also are faced because of global warming. So Brazil, you find they've uh, faced droughts in 2015-16, India faced in 2019, Australia, many countries are facing droughts because of global warming. Again, another effect of global warming is wildfires. Now, when, as you can see here, whenever you find that there are days are hotter, the chances of having a wildfire or a bushfire is higher. So whenever hotter temperatures result in wildfires or bushfires. So you, as you can see that uh, this is also becoming common by the day. Now, as we speak, California wildfires, there's still devastation is going on. People are working on it and, you know, trying to uh, recover whatever they can be uh, because of the wildfires that happened last month. Now, uh, I would like to speak about the Australian bushfire, which happened. Uh, if you see the picture, you will look at it and you will think that it's a volcano erupting or something, right? It looks uh, big, huge. Uh, you can't imagine that it is happening uh, because of a wildfire. This picture is taken in January 2020 in Eastern Gippy Islands, Victoria. Now, what happened uh, is I would like to point out here the duration of the Australian bushfire season. It started in June 2019 and it ended in May 2020. This year, almost one year, various places the bushfire had spread and caused a lot of devastation. I'm sure you would have watched it in news how much the destruction happened because of wildfires in Australia. So such events are very common nowadays. Uh, as we speak, even Amazon forest goes through uh, forest fires. So these are also an effect due to global warming pollution that has been caused. So overall, let's take a look. We have extreme temperatures, droughts, fires, floods, mudslides, storms. All these catastrophic events are on the rise. In the recent years, if you see, it's just going up and up, you know, more and more uh, events are occurring and we find it very often. Now, melting of ice is the biggest problem that we are facing due to global warming. Now, um, um, this is a picture of Lake Imja, okay, uh, in Nepal. This is said to be uh, providing water for almost 2 billion people on Earth. Now, uh, what happens is, this is a recent picture. You can see that the river is melted and uh, staying here. And in this picture, you can see how much the lake has expanded and become longer. Now, you may wonder, so what? I mean, if there is more water, it's good for us. We get more water, right? But what happens is that when the ice starts melting, because of the global warming, we have snow high, uh, snow uh, polar ice caps, they are melting. We have sea ice melting. Uh, we have land ice, like this one melting, glaciers are melting, everything is melting fast. So what happens is there's too much of water. Now that water is not going to stay there because those that water will drain out some it come through your cities, your rivers, lakes, finally it drains into the oceans. Now what happens when you pour more and more water, when when more and more water gets drained into the ocean, what happens? It's the level of the water starts rising up. So what happens when the level of the water rises up? Our sea level water is going to come into our land, right? So this is the biggest uh, 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 high uh, risk factor that we have to think about when it comes to global warming, the melting of ice. Um, so I will show you this. This is a perfect day, a sunny day in Miami, uh, Florida. And you can see that the sea water has entered into the streets of Miami. Why? Because the sea level has come up and it has come to the coastal cities. So this will be, this is a possibility to any coastal city around the world. So, uh, I'm sorry, yeah. So any coastal city will face uh, issues because of the sea level rising and coming inside. So imagine what, what we are going to do when we have water in the streets, uh, uh, you know, permanently. So um, I will show you another thing. Yeah. When you take cities, when you look at cities that are highly populated, highly crowded, uh, in other 50 years, you can find that Kolkata and Mumbai, 
you know kolkata and mumbai are at high risk of water level affecting the cities why mumbai is very crowded kolkata is very crowded imagine if we have waters in the streets of kolkata and mumbai where will the people go right so this is a biggest cause of concern that we have to consider while thinking about global warming now uh, in 2014 department of defense in us declared that climate change will cause food shortages water shortages pandemic diseases refugees and also natural disasters around the globe now when we think about refugees we always think um, you know people shift or leave their home and go to another place another state or a country uh, because of political reasons because of war because of uh, communal riots you know a uh, reasons like this is what comes into our mind when we think about refugees but climate crisis is also creating refugees at a higher rate i will give you another example for this kiribati is a uh, first country uh, to purchase a land from another country and move all its citizens from their home to another home uh, president anote tong uh, purchased the land in 2014 and shifted all his residents from his island why because you can see that the island is flat when the island is flat the sea water has entered into the island and once the salt water is inside you cannot do cultivation there is no agriculture how will the people survive so they couldn't do anything uh, more so they had to shift uh their complete uh population to another piece of island so this is again a very very uh serious issue that we'll have to consider when it comes to sea level uh, rising due to all the ice caps melting again due to global warming now heat uh heat not only affects the oceans and marine life and everything but it's affecting our agriculture in a big way this is a farmer showing a uh, damage uh, heat damage crop in uh, mexico now heat no is not only creating uh, such crops like you know it is not giving proper yield it's not uh, cultivating crops properly but at the same time whatever crop that is growing the nutrient level in that crop is very very low compared to what it was before so heat is affecting our agriculture uh, in a big way our cultivation our crops in a, such a big way now climate change is also a medical emergency how because there are so many diseases are on the rise so when it's warmer temperatures the insects incubate more you know they become uh, more in population so they are able to spread the diseases uh, much faster so we have uh, diseases because of air pollution heat stress water borne diseases or uh, and insect borne diseases all these things are on the rise uh, are created due to this change in the climatic conditions around the world again uh, one more reason is uh, the habitat loss we do deforestation we are cutting down trees we are removing the uh, native homes of so many species of plants and animals and it is believed that this is currently we are going through a extinction era where it is uh, you know uh, it's uh, after dinosaurs going extinct 65 million years ago right now it is the highest extinction rate that we are facing this is a picture of a uh, uh endangered golden uh, frog and imagine this animal you know you don't get to see it on earth again so this is something that has happening at a higher rate right now and it's not fair you know uh, it's not fair to see such animals such, and lot of plant species are going extinct because of uh, biodiversity loss uh, and climatic conditions so talking about all these things i'll give you an overall picture of what we have uh, you know learned here one we i spoke about how the surface temperature is increasing because of uh, temperature the earth is getting warmer the atmospheric temperature goes up because of that land ice is melting sea ice is melting sea level is going up you know the sea is coming inside the uh, land and also because of the temperature there is extreme precipitation events that means lot of cyclone um, floods uh, rains and lot of uh, droughts i mean sorry cyclones uh, or hurricane typhoon all these things are happening uh, it's going up because of that we have lot of flooding we have drought we have snow uh, cover is melting glaciers are melting and uh, soil erosion coastal flooding then we have fires all these things 
all these things have resulted because there is an imbalance in the earth's energy now we are we have disturbed the entire balance of the earth now i know this looks very grave it looks like it's going to uh, be the end of the world i know it is uh, sounding very uh, you know there is no other way to save this uh, how how much we have done and all this thing right now i know it must be going on your head but i would like you to uh, you know wait a little bit i will let you know there are a lot of positive things coming up and i will get to it in a bit now yeah so looking at this what is the price that we are paying for using carbon for using fo fossil fuels all these things the all this in this list and many more that we have we didn't even speak uh, spoken about today as uh, made the world economic forum say that climate crisis is a number one threat to our economy because we are whatever we are earning we are spending uh, for uh, for all you know for all these devastations that is happening we are ending up in spending more and more money for uh, the effects of global warming cost because we are using fossil fuels so we are economically also drained out because we are using fossil fuels and the carbon uh, the carbon that is emitted because of this so knowing all this is i've given you a bigger picture of uh, all these things that's happening uh, because of the use of fossil fuels i would like to ask you the same the first question must we change i'm sure the answer is yes and all of you are thinking yes this is the time we have to make the change and go ahead and uh, you know give our contribution be a part of this change now so let's move on to the second question can we change now this is a positive bit that i was talking about where we will talk about a lot of solutions we have at hand we are already making progress we have done a lot of uh, we have taken a lot of efforts and we are uh, doing a lot of uh, progress in uh, using uh, you know in uh, trying to uh, stop or is trying to solve this climate crisis now what is the first solution that we have to do we have to stop using the fossil fuel and try to find another source which will which we can use at the same time which will not affect the earth right so these sources are called the renewable source or the green energy or sustainable resource so all these words you can use it for the source of energy that you can take and use but at the same time it is not affecting our planet right so we have to shift from fossil fuels to renewable source of energy so the first and foremost yes wind energy wind energy is so uh, abundantly available that even if you use the energy for the entire world whatever uses are there you take that uh, energy that is produced by wind and make use of it still we will be left with 40 times extra energy you know so much of energy can be produced with wind energy and it is possible to uh, shift from fossil fuel uh, dependence to wind energy now you can see there is a high rise of uh, uh, wind energy instead of windmill installations across the world it has gone up people are doing more and more we are uh, shifting into wind energy the second solution i would like to talk about obviously is solar energy again it's more dramatic than the wind energy because uh, more and more solar energy i'm sure most of you uh, are having solar panels or you've seen solar energy installation and most of your uh, school exhibitions you use solar panels and you know you display how it is used for houses and buildings and many solutions so i've seen a lot of children using uh, solar powered uh you know robotics or solar powered energy for uh, displaying your science experiments so uh such is the awareness level that has come for solar energy so which is a great uh great solution for uh stopping fossil fuel use now why we are talking so much of solar energy is that if you take the sunlight that's falling on earth for one hour and the energy that comes for for uh in that one hour you can use that energy for an entire year the entire world can use it for one full year can you imagine how much of sunlight we are having and it, it's not possible to take all the energy 
it's not practical but then even a fraction of it if we can use it then it is a biggest solution that we have in hand where we don't have to depend on fossil fuels anymore now this is a perfect example of converting to solar energy in chile uh, they do, the government took policy decisions they made rules that yes we are going to convert into solar energy and we are not uh, using fossil fuels anymore so they started in uh, installing a lot of solar uh, you know energy uh, uh, installations were made and even still it is under construction or you know it is approved projects are being done so can you imagine the amount of growth it has had this is a possibility in so many different countries this is a possibility of uh, a, you know where many places on earth this we can do it and we do not have to use fossil fuels at all and what is the best advantage of fossil uh, solar energy there are so many places so many places in this world so many countries that still don't have a proper electricity grid proper power station where the power lines run through and come and connect to the houses like what we have uh, we even have generators and backups but so many places are still deprived or without electricity so when you talk about such places you don't have to invest in so many power lines and station power stations and all those things instead all you have to do is fix a solar panel on your roof and there you have they do have access for uh, you know to electricity at least so overall if you see uh, because the solar uh, energy is getting installed more and more even the manufacturing cost is become lower so like any other technology like you take pick up a smartphone when smartphones were released it was very expensive but now you can find as less as 1000 rupees you will find a smartphone so like that uh, solar panels when they came in uh, they were quite expensive to manufacture but now even the cost of manufacturing has gone down because we have are shifting to solar energy more and more this is our own gujarat and almost 5000 acres 5000 more acres are, uh, of solar energy plant is being installed here and making it the asia's largest uh, park so solar park so can you imagine india making such a uh, you know uh, progressive effort towards uh, going green so this is um, the largest asia's largest solar park that we can have now another solution towards uh, going green is retrofitting buildings now what is retrofitting buildings now when you, uh, it is like renovating a building but renovation is done to make it more energy efficient make it uh, reduce emissions make it uh, you know safe from flooding erosion high winds earthquakes and uh, many more uh, effects so uh, even a, a building as old as empire state building uh, this is almost 90 years old and last 10 years they took up this project where they are they did retrofitting which means they uh, made a lot of changes in this building and they spent a, mil a lot of dollars millions of dollars in uh, making these changes and what happened is they are, have started saving millions and millions of dollars in their uh, electricity bill. They have become more efficient and the building is very, very uh, safe. I know it's been renovated to that quality right now. Now, this has happened in India also. Mumbai, Godrej Bhavan was uh, done, retrofitting happened. If you Google it up, you will find an entire report by NRDC in this and how they fixed up roof or terrace garden uh, they put double glazed windows they've done uh, light fixtures they have put led bulbs and uh, they brought the energy consumption lower and what happened is the they have brought the entire building temperature to uh, you know 10 degrees lesser they have made it by doing all these things and also they're saving a lot of money because uh, they did this retrofitting. Now, this is a concept that you can again uh, take it up as a project or you can do uh, your further studies when you take uh, take up your career there are sustainable audits green audits that are uh, becoming popular now and it's a you know it we call it the green job so uh, you can uh, if you're thinking about career choices you can yes go in for such jobs where you are contributing to uh, a greener planet okay so 
this uh, is very very efficient and becoming very popular retrofitting buildings and don't you think this is the perfect time to do this because most of the buildings are lying vacant everybody is working from home studying from home so the buildings are actually lying vacant and it's a perfect time to do this retrofitting buildings and you can even do it for your schools your colleges your offices your homes everything you can take uh, you know do an audit and see how much energy you're cons consuming and what can be done to uh, make it greener now amazing sustainable re uh, revolution is all these automobile ma manufacturers are uh, bringing in electric vehicles and uh, they are either in production or they've already brought in uh, you know electric vehicles now uh, even tesla is bring uh, brought in almost i think 18 wheeler vehicle with which is electric so this is again an amazing move by all these uh, manufacturers now there is one uh, point here where you uh, it doesn't uh, affect when you buy an electric vehicle and then you say, yes, I'm going green, because if you use an electricity from a fossil fuel and then it still doesn't make any difference. So you have to make sure that you are buying an electric vehicle at the same time you're using an electricity that is uh, you know, produced by a renewable source that is either sun, sun solar energy, wind energy, or a, a, a renewable source of energy. So then it makes a lot of difference when you uh, purchase an electric vehicle. So these are very few solutions that I've given you, which is successful, but there are many, many more solutions. Uh, it's been tested, it's been put into practice, it's been in design, uh, uh, you know, table, uh, so many innovations, so many, if you just uh, study about it, there are every all around the world, people are working to bring in new and new methods and of uh, going green. So giving you all these solutions. Now, let me ask you the question again. So can we change? Yes, again, it's a positive yes. Yes, we can change. Now, uh, let's move on to the third question. Will we change? Yes, there are solutions. Yes, we have created the problem. We have solutions. But do you think as people will we, we change? Again, this is, uh, um, th this is a part of the uh, presentation where I would say that I will give you uh, promises that the governments have done and uh, some you know, positivity in this presentation. Now, in December 2015, Paris uh, climate negotiation, almost every nation in the world, they signed an agreement saying that, yes, we are, uh, you know, we are seeing global uh, warming and we are seeing climate change. So we are going to make take efforts in reducing these emissions uh, by net zero, uh, try to face it down and probably another 50 years we will bring it down as much as possible the governments have agreed and this is the first and biggest step that the world has taken together and so it's very very important negotiation that happened in paris now you may think yes governments go around they sign agreements but does it help does it work this is another positive story about the agreements working now, in the 1980s, what happened was the uh, scientists found uh, holes appearing in the ozone layer. Um, and uh, they found out that this is caused due to chlorine or chlorofluorocarbons, uh, CFCs. Now, what happened when they knew, understood what caused the problem? They met in uh, uh, Montreal. They uh, met in Vienna Convention and they signed a Montreal Protocol and they decided to reduce or phase down the use of CFCs, which were used in refrigerants, which was used in foam sprays, uh, fire extinguishers. So what uh, uh, the countries decided to do is cut down using these substances. And you know what? 35 years it's been and this year it's uh, ozone hole showed the closest size ever so it is uh, isn't it amazing what we can do so we can reverse what has happened and it is a possibility and these agreements are very very important and essential for governments to make their move and you know take efforts and make bring in solutions so looking at the awareness level right now, we are the very fact that we are sitting here and talking right now about climate crisis itself is a biggest, uh, biggest, uh, you know, uh, boost or biggest advantage uh, right now because 
awareness level has gone up like crazy. Everybody is talking about climate change. Everybody is aware about global warming. So, so many people are coming out and talking about it. They're trying to uh, make solutions. They're going green. And the more people talk about it, the more solutions will come out. And this is exactly what we are doing right now. So the more uh, you are aware about what is going on, you will think green. You will think about planet Earth and uh, do, uh, you know, you will start changing your lifestyle according to that, you know, that thought that, you know, no, 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 if I do this, the Earth is getting affected and you will be conscious. So awareness level is the highest right now when compared to any time before. So this is an a uh, positive point uh, right now. So where is India in all these things? What is Indian government doing in climate change? And you know where, where are we standing as the nation? So in 2008, National Action Plan on Climate Change was uh, formed by India. And what they did was they, have a, they fixed a target that by 2030, 40% of the energy use will be shifted to green energy. So they will start using 40% of their energy from renewable sources. That was the target by 2030. You know where we are right now? We have already crossed the halfway mark and we're in 21%. So we are already crossed and we're doing a great progress in going green and moving to sustainable energy. And this year has been an amazing year for India's climate change because we brought in uh, the first climate change assessment report in 19 June 2020 by the Ministry of Earth Sciences and IIT and Pune. Now, um, any problem, any problem, only when you understand what the problem is, you can bring solutions, right? So this report is is one such report that is very, very essential for us to understand what is happening in India. And India is not only diverse in its culture, people, language, it is also diverse in, uh, you know, monsoons, climate, uh, terrain, weather, everything is different from each region, right? India from him uh, from Himalayas, you just come down. Everything, every state has got different monsoons, different uh, wind direction. It, it, it gets rainfall in different seasons, different months. Everything is different. So can you imagine how they would have prepared this remote, uh, report? It is exhaustive and uh, it's a commendable job what India has done is bringing out this report. So after this report, it is expected to uh, so many more futuristic, innovative technologies and solutions are going to come up and we are going to make tremendous uh, uh, shift towards uh, renewable sources and green solutions in the future. So uh, thinking about all these things, yes, government is doing their bit. Yes, the world is agreed. Yes, there is a lot of changes. Yes, we have solutions. But I am sitting in my house. I'm a student. I'm at my school. I'm, uh, you know, I'm at my home. I'm at my office. What can I do as a person, as a single individual? What can I do to make, create this effect, create this change uh, so that, you know, uh, I can contribute to the greener planet? So for this, I bring to you the I Can Change series. So this is something that I put together. Uh, normally what happens, yes, we do attend lectures. We talk about it. We, people tell us you have to shift. You have to go green. You have to save planet. You will stop doing this. And by the time we come back home, we'll be thinking, what can we do, right? So we always think that, you know, uh, yeah, they told this, but I don't know how to do it. So this is always there in our mind. So for this, I thought I will give a few suggestions where you can do it to change your everyday life. So the first thing here in the series is I can change my mornings. So simple lifestyles, uh, lifestyle changes that go a long way in saving our planet. So the, how do we start uh, the first thing in our morning? We brush our teeth. So we, the plastic toothbrush that the first toothbrush that you used as a baby is still lying on earth right now somewhere on somewhere in the landfill or somewhere it's still lying somewhere so what happens is that the plastic get takes about 400 to 500 years to decompose so when that happens uh, you know you're starting your day with something that's affecting your planet so what happens is there are biodegradable options so go in for it 
Now, again, water usage, there are ample ways uh, to save and uh, reduce the usage of water. We have spoken about it, uh, planting trees, wa uh, reducing water usage. We have to put it into practice, you know, deliberately. Coming to food wastage. Now, food wastage alone causes 10% of greenhouse gases. Why? Because uh, you see, we plant, we cultivate a plant, and then when... Um, uh, we uh, grow it, we are using so much of energy, we use vehicles, we use, uh, you know, transportation, we do harvesting, then we, it has to be shipped, it has to be stored, then it has to be brought to the market, we buy it, then we bring it home, then we, after we bring it home, we keep it in our refrigerator, we are using current for that, we are using gas to cook it, and after all these things, you throw that food, you know how much of energy that is used for bringing that food, it is getting wasted and it doesn't stop there because you're thrown that food from your house a truck has to take it to a decomposing place again energy use used and again when it goes to the decomposing yard again energy is used to decompose it so so much of energy is getting wasted because we throw the food so buy what you buy what you need eat what you buy don't uh, you know don't trash it before it spoils in case if you're left with extra please share it don't trash it so that is a very very uh, important thing that we have to follow every day i can change my commute yes this is self explanatory walking cycling using public transport is more uh, greener and it will make you fit as well as the planet too i can change how i wash now, this is something that I wanted to discuss because have you ever thought what happens to all the soap, the detergents that is washed away from our houses? Have you ever given us the thought, where, did, where does it go? Yes, some, uh, some may say that, yes, the water gets treated and comes back for usage in various forms. But most of it, the water contains a lot of these chemicals which are very, very uh, dangerous, very, very cancerous and cause a lot of bad effects in the uh, environment. So what happens is that most of this water gets mixed with the fresh water, that is your lakes, rivers, ponds, whatever water bodies are around your city, it mixes with that water. Now, what happens when the soap and the shampoos and, you know, um, washing sodas and, you know, fabric conditioners, all these uh, detergents mix with your fresh water. When you take a fresh water fish, it is, you know, it will be very slimy when compared to a sea fish. Now, what happens is this slimy layer or the mucus layer that is all around the fish or any uh, uh, amphibian or, a, a, you know, a freshwater uh, organism when you pick up a frog or any other thing, it will be very slimy when from a river or a pond. That slimy layer or the mucus layer is very, very important for that fish to be protected against parasites and bacteria. So what happens when the detergent goes into the water, it destroys that mucus layer. And because it destroys, the fish is prone to infection. And some way or the other, we are going to consume it either by the water comes to us for use or the fishes we're going to consume. And we are going to consume that infected fish or the water. So this is caused again because the detergents mix with the fresh water. Another result is algae blooms. Phosphate from all these uh, detergents, when it mixes in the water, it makes the algae to grow faster. Now, what happens when algae blooms? I know it looks very pretty and green on top. Whenever you see a pond which is green on top with algae, you will not find much aquatic life underneath it because the algae consumes oxygen. It eats up oxygen to grow. So the more and more it grows, the more and more oxygen it eats up. So that is not good for an, any aquatic animal or a plant that is living in a pond or a freshwater. So the phosphates in the um, detergents, they uh, make the algae grow faster. That again, you know, it affects the life of other animals and plants. Now, Containers, yes, this is the first reason that we have to avoid such uh, detergents because we buy a plastic container, we use it, we throw it. Buy another container, use it, throw it. So how many plastic containers are going to your dustbin? And these, most of these containers are not recyclable. 
or it is not reused it is not recycled and it is just dumped in some places so there are many eco friendly options products are available right now in market today you can either go and get it refilled and come when it gets over or they even uh, you know come and collect it and then you don't have to use any other uh, um, packaging you know to reduce the packaging there are so many options available to us now so whenever we we can afford to do it we should opt for such biodegradable options so make your eco friendly choice today now i can change what i throw this is very very important um the most polluting stuff which comes from our house is the sanitary napkins sanitary napkins are 90% plastic of course there are so much of awareness that's happened uh, about how to dispose it neatly you should not flush in the toilets and all those things but just the material used in a, a sanitary napkin uh, or when you throw the sanitary napkin it doesn't get decomposed it lies on the uh, you know around in your environment somewhere or the other so that is a biggest biggest cause of you know dumping that's happening because of sanitary napkins and so there are so many biodegradable options that have come up menstrual cups have come up where you can reduce the use and you can even save your health as well as the planet's health now this is something that really disturbs me a lot because we use ear swabs cotton swabs just for few seconds to clean our ears right we just use it for 2 seconds 3 seconds then we are throwing it the plastic swabs lie there for 400 to 500 years because we are using it for 2 seconds isn't it it's it's really not fair what we are doing to earth so there is biodegradable option please choose opt for it and go for it another biggest pollution is diapers i'm sure all of you must be having a baby somebody in a relative family someone is having a baby or you would have used it when you were a baby and uh, th this is a comparison that shows that in one year the amount of diapers that a baby uses is this much when compared to cloth diapers if you opt you can use the same number of cloth diapers for 3 years 4 years 5 years until how many over years you are going to use the diapers so why dump so much every year so many diapers every year when you can opt for something eco friendly and it is not going to get dumped on our environment and spoil it so um, switch to biodegradable options and we will save your health as well as the planet's health too now this even boys girls everybody should be aware of this you should talk to your family about it you should talk to your friends about it and uh, um, you know and discuss what is what happens when we use these stuff and how we can change to biodegradable eco friendly options now there is another um, series another one in the series is i can change how i throw now i'm sure uh we are all started following this segregating waste in our houses and uh, i am from coimbatore and coimbatore uh, we are uh, practicing it uh, very diligently we are doing it every day in our houses we have three bins we separate our waste and we put it in three th different bins and all the three bins are cleared separately and taken to their respective places well, um now have you ever thought why we are doing it you know people who are already doing it uh have you thought why they're doing it because a lot of corporations have told that they will not collect garbage unless it is segregated now why we are doing it because normally what happens when you dump all the waste in one bin what happens one truck will come take that bin dump it in them then the truck will go to a landfill they'll go and dump all the garbage in this landfill now what happens can you imagine going and standing there and separating the waste for recycling for decomposing for reusing what whatever it is have you can you imagine happening we have seen this in all the cities we have seen so many mountains and mountains of garbage being dumped in a landfill now what happens we are not able to segregate it so generally it is burnt so when it's burnt it releases a lot of pollution and not only that because of landfill uh, landfills 
we have contamination of water we have our environment gets polluted you can imagine the smell that's coming and it is a breeding ground for a lot of infectious diseases so you will avoid all these things if you stop uh, dumping all your garbage in one dustbin this can be done in your homes your offices your schools everywhere you can separate the uh, garbage and send it to the respective places so your kitchen waste can go to decomposing place your recyclable waste can go for that and your uh, you know your uh, food wastage and other things can be i mean nowadays you can find even electronic uh, items are picked up separately and it goes for recycling so uh, we, there are people who are already doing it we just have to make our move in our homes because we can make a biggest change by avoiding such landfills in our areas now i can change my shopping i will go through this quickly buy energy efficient appliances buy recycled products or pre-loved products shop local uh, products because you will save a lot of energy the more you uh, buy imported uh, items you will be uh, so much of carbon footprint that means so much of energy gets wasted in manufacturing shipping packaging storing and bringing it to your home so so much you are actually wasting uh, resources and energy by shopping imported things instead shop local products and you will save a lot of energy again choose biodegradable pro products meat yes red meat consumption um, are uh, high on energy we can reduce our uh, consumption on uh, red meats and then orangutans get affected due to palm oil plantations around the world so the palm oil is found generally in cosmetics confectioneries like chocolate uh, baked goods and all those things so you can see if the product is made of palm oil and um, all over the world you can find that a lot of people are against palm oil uh, products because it uh, destroys it is cultivated in a place where so many animals homes were there and they destroyed that and then plant the palm trees so that is why uh, palm oil uh, people are against it avoiding landfill we have spoken reducing waste yes bags we are shifted made a uh, drastic shift to cloth bags and you know reusing bags and most important point of this all is be informed be aware of what you're buying where you're buying from uh, what you're eating what you're throwing uh, where it is produced and from your house where it's going you have to be conscious about all these things when you're aware of all these things you will know that how much you are uh, helping the planet uh in staying green or how much you're saving the planet now uh, one more point i would like to add in this is online shopping yes it's become practical it has become uh you know uh, part of our lives right now especially in this covid scenario but uh, you there are options where you can buy a product and go and pick it up in your local store in your city you can opt for that and you can also opt for products which has less packaging so that you're not going to tear it and you know uh just you're going to dump this packaging in uh, in the bin so try and uh, avoid a uh, product which comes with a lot of packaging so that is a uh, uh, how you can change your shopping ways now of course i have to speak about plastic single use plastics nine reasons to refuse single use plastics first and foremost it's made from fossil fuels second the huge carbon footprint carbon footprint is the energy it takes to produce that product and at the same time using it and then you know decomposing it or you know throwing it away so the entire energy process that is called the carbon footprint and plastic has a huge carbon footprint because it uses a lot of carbon releases so it it is going to stay in our earth for hundreds of years and only a tiny percentage of plastic is getting recycled and most of it are just dumped somewhere on earth and what it does it leaches toxins for into our food and drink and it causes hormonal disruptions or cancers not only for us it also creates this problem for plants and animals as well so you polluting our oceans animals marine animals and birds getting affected we have seen it and it is said that some way or the other we are consuming micro microplastics right now through our food and drink so it is uh, entering our food chain also so these are uh, major reasons why we should avoid uh, using plastic so what i normally tell is if my grandma didn't use plastic why should i because we have survived so many hundreds of years without plastic 
and we can survive many more if we say no to plastics okay so these are some of the lifestyle changes that we can do which i uh, you know i brought you in this i can change series but again i will ask you the question can i make a change now uh, yes these are habits that we can cultivate but in our minds generally we have this self doubt can can we change i mean just because i am changing will the world change uh, is it possible that you know something can happen like this we always ask ourselves can i do something and will it be good can i do it these are the questions we always ask not only kids even elders even much successful people they always have uh, have this questions about themselves so this is a kind of a, a you know a small little kutti story i want to tell you all this is a very very motivating story that i uh, think about whenever i'm feeling low whenever i think that you know uh, you know i'm not very confident i always think about this story and uh, you know get a lot of energy from this so this is my favorite story that i would love to share it with you so this is about the story of wolves that changed the course of a river can you do you think it's possible do you think wolves can change the course of a river just imagine it is a true story i'm going to tell you a true story about wolves that change the course of a river what are the possibilities so let me get to the story this happened in yellowstone national park in california so what happened was uh, the scientists did some study and they uh, learned that there were not many predators like you know uh, animals like wolves were not there in the park so in 1995 14 wolves were reintroduced into the park and they because they they did a uh, biodiversity study and they introduced 14 wolves into the park now before the uh wolves came in the deer population was multiplying like anything there were so many deer and because a lot of deer lot of grazing was happening and they grazed so much that the vegetation was not even growing as soon as there is a, a plant growing they eat it up so the vegetation was becoming lesser and lesser in the park now what happened when the wolves came the wolves started hunting the deer and the deer population came under control now this changed the behavior of the deer the deer started avoiding certain places in the park where it thought if i go there i'm going to get hunted so i will not go there so some valleys some gorges somewhere you know it started avoiding those places it will only go and come back and will not do grazing there it will not spend too much of time grazing there and what happened to those places when it started doing that the plants started growing back there was regeneration the vegeta vegetation was coming back up and it was getting greener again now once that happened the birds started returning to the park there were beavers once the beavers started coming there were a lot of amphibian population uh, increasing then we had coyotes which used to hunt the rabbits and mice the coyotes were uh, uh, hunted by the wolves so once the coyote population was under control rabbits and mice population increased because the rodents increased the hawks started returning to the park now this also helped the bear population to increase because there were a lot of trees there were a lot of berry trees so lots to eat so the bears also multiplied and at the same time bears were uh, uh, eating the wolf cubs so they kept the wolves also under control imagine the entire cycle can you just pictureize what has happened the wolves came then how many animals survived and flourished and then uh, you know it has become a big cycle so this is called a biodiversity regeneration or they work on this and it didn't it didn't stop here now the best part was a phenomenon that happened following all these things because the deers were grazing less the river banks started getting firm they started becoming stronger because the plants were growing and the corners in the river banks the vegetation was coming up so there was less soil erosion because the soil was uh, uh, you know not eroding as much it became firm and then the river started following a narrower course or a narrower path so can you imagine the change that was brought in because there was a imbalance they brought in a wolf and then slowly 
uh, the balance started coming up and amazing change happened. Uh, the biodiversity completely, that is the entire uh, balance in the park came into being. And this year is the 25th year after reintroducing the park, uh, sorry, wolves into the park. And uh, see the amount of changes that has come up because of that. Okay, would have, I mean, would we have ever imagined just by bringing in wolves, this could have happened? And this is another field of study that is happening where people study about certain environments and see what is lacking in that place and you know work on improving it by uh, you know filling that gaps and then making it flourish so whenever you feel that you can't do it uh, you know you can't make a change there is no uh, you know uh, there is that self doubt that comes into your mind think of the story and be that wolf be that change you know be uh you know motivated get motivated and just do it things will fall into place so again i will ask you this question can you make the change i'm sure the answer in your mind are yes yes we can make the change and we can save our planet like gandhiji said in a gentle way we can shake the world so uh, these are some change, young change makers I would like to uh, introduce you all to. Yugratna Srivastava, she was only 13 when she joined UNEP and uh, she started consulting with the United Nations Environment Program. She's right now heading the tree, uh, Trillion Tree campaign uh, by which she, her team of, uh, you know, her team is uh, planning to plant as much trees as possible so that at least half of the emissions can be absorbed by the trees. Uh, Aditya Mukherjee is amazing. Uh, in 2018, he walked up to all the cafes and restaurants in uh, Bangalore and he uh, spoke about uh, not using plastic straws and or choosing biodegradable ones. And he was invited by the United Nations Youth uh, Summit last year. Then we have Lissipriya Kangujam. She was only six when she started the child movement. And now she, uh, she travels all around the world talking about uh, you know climate crisis and how leaders have to make change so that the children have a better future uh, the earth is a better place for the children and archana surang she is one of the U United Nations Youth Advisory Group uh, on climate change and she gives solutions and she's part of the team which gives solutions and ideas uh, to um, the UN uh, United Nations team uh, for fighting climate crisis. Then we have Vidit Baya from Udaipur. He writes about uh, climate crisis and he urges um, the leaders, uh, policymakers that to take action and declare that climate crisis is an emergency and we need immediate action. Uh, Ridhima Pandey, she was only nine when she faced the Kedarnath floods. And uh, uh, because of that, she filed uh, a complaint against the National Green Tribunal saying that uh, uh, the government is not taking enough actions against climate change. So uh, these are only very few handful of people that I can I fit into the screen right now. But uh, so many more children just like you waiting to do things and doing wonderful job. So I would uh, uh, like uh, all of you all of you, I'm a I'm little greedy on this, so I will uh, ex, uh, like all of you to uh, become change makers in, in, in any way or the other. So like uh, Kalamji said, you cannot change your future, you, change, you can change your habits and surely your habits will change your future. So you don't have to be climatologists, you don't have to be scientists, you don't have to be uh, experts in, uh, you know, environment uh, and, and, and environmentalists uh, not everybody can be like that but whatever you are you can make your change you can be an artist create awareness through your art you can be a writer write about it write to uh, uh, policy makers uh, change makers write to government um, you can be an architect or an engineer design buildings which are more uh, sustainable and you know uh, more eco-friendly you can be uh, you know a doctor try to work on uh, issues which are creating diseases um, or you know work on a place that is uh, uh, you know spreading the diseases so you can be whatever you want now some kids uh, do tell me that uh, uh, ma'am I'm, I'm very good with computers i love gaming i love software i like app designing how can i contribute we need technology 
because just because we're saying save the earth save the earth we cannot go back 50 years or 100 years we need to work on this we need technology we need development at the same time we need something that will keep our earth safe also for that we need innovative minds we need fresh people young minds to think so much about earth while they design stuff so all these things any field you take you can be uh, you know a green warrior you can do your part and make change now all out of all these things i would say that the, you all can be one you can be a teacher you can teach others you can create awareness with your family your friends your school your i mean your places wherever you go wherever you go you can make be a change maker you can do a lot of change so join those who are using their voices their votes their choices to fight the climate crisis and you will also start doing it so you have to do it as if your world depends on it you know because actually that green marble there sorry the blue marble there our home it does depend on all of you and then the earth needs you to be the warrior and protected from all this effect. So this is it from me. I am Samvita Shivdasni, Climate Reality Leader. And uh, I'm sure Bhavesh is also with me today. Um, so I would like you to uh, take this opportunity to thank all of you. I know it's been a pretty long session. And uh, I hope there is so much of uh, uh, information that I'm able to share with you. And uh, you got to learn a lot of uh, information and uh, solutions that you can be part of so thank you for being a great audience uh, yes i think uh, i will stop sharing the screen right now sorry Yes, uh, Bhavesh ji, uh, I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Bhavesh Swami. He is uh, working as the uh, Engagement and Clean Energy Lead at Climate Reality India office. He has more than 15 years of experience uh, in this domain and set the ball rolling for first renewable energy park in Delhi NCR, which is acting as a motivation for many budding school and college children who want to make a career in the space of clean energy. So, yes, uh, we are open to questions. Bhavesh ji, thank you so much for being here. And uh, uh, Indeed, uh, thanks to you, ma'am. It is always so enriching and so motivating with the kind of enlightenment you provided to us and with the kind of motivation to provide you provided to the students. We, were, we became motivated enough and I'm pretty hopeful that students have taken it in a good, great stride. Friends, we are always standing with you in terms of taking action. Your principal man, all the people involved who were doing this, uh, who were helping us out in terms of carrying out this seminar, really thankful to you. And above all, ma'am, you were really, really great in terms of delivery, in terms of making us all enlightened with respect to climate change problems and the associated solutions that we as students, as change makers, can think of. Um, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank, thank you. you so much, sir, thank you. for uh, giving us uh, such a wonderful session. Definitely, our children would have uh, taken uh, much information to keep our uh, generation uh, in, a, in a very well manner, and definitely they will carry it to the next generation too. So it, it was a wonderful session. Thank you so much, ma'am, and thank sir, you. You. for being with us. Uh, Thank you. We have, uh, we can we are open for question answer session if uh, the students want.